Hi everyone and thanks for joining me. Today we're going to be making this super simple zipper pouch. It's got zipper tabs. It's a really nice way to finish off your pouches with the tabs. Kind of gives you the nicer, neater corners. This is a lined zipper pouch. If you want to do embroidery, I'm going to include that. If you don't, you can skip past the embroidery part. But in the last video, I asked you what you wanted to see, and overwhelmingly, it was more embroidery, more sewing projects. We're going to start with this very, very simple zipper pouch, and then we're going to build from here. I made this one for Evie using a waterproof canvas. I'll have everything linked in the description below if you're interested. And a woven cotton on the inside. You're going to need some fusible fleece, a zipper. We'll get into all of that in the video, but I thought we would start with a super simple project for the beginning of the year, and then we'll expand from here. So let's get started. I hope you guys enjoy this, and let's get going. So let's go over what we need. Uh, for the zipper pouch, you're going to need a zipper that's at least eight inches long. This is just a leftover piece from a longer zipper that I used. I put another pull on it, and I have marked it at one, two, three, four, five, six and a half inches. So I'm going to be cutting it off at six and a half inches. So you need at least six and a half inches of zipper. You're going to need some fusible fleece and you're going to need two pieces cut to five and a half by seven. You're gonna need two pieces for your lining, two pieces for your outer. I'm using a woven cotton for my lining and a waterproof canvas for the outer. Those are cut to six by seven and a half inches. Again, you need two pieces of each. And then I'm going to put zipper tabs on this. So I've got two tabs cut to one and a half by two inches. If you want to embroider on it, I'm going to be using a piece of tearaway stabilizer. You could also use cutaway, I suppose. I'm going to be using tearaway. I'm using a five by seven hoop. You can use whatever works with your machine. I'm gonna start by just putting my template on and marking the centers. A lot of times I get asked how to use these templates. I don't always use these, but if you don't have templates, just use the marking on your hoop. You should have two horizontal and two vertical marks. You can just put a straight ruler lining up. Uh, let me grab a ruler here. Lining up those marks just like so with this tab and this tab. And I'm just going to draw a line. So if you don't have the templates, you can do it this way. So we've established the center on our hoop and our stabilizer. I'm going to take the piece of outer that I'm going to be using for the embroidery. I'm going to fold it in half and crease it. You can also just measure it if you want to do it that way, but this is just as easy and this waterproof canvas creases well. So we've got that done. I'm going to use a little bit of this 505 temporary adhesive and you can either spray the fabric, or spray the hoop. I'm going to spray the hoop lightly. And what I'm going to do is mark my center. Now, what I like to do is use a straight pin. So you grab a straight pin, you stick it right in the center of your mark, stick it right in the center of your crosshairs. And we know we've got that straight. And then I can use the lines to mark up my horizontal and vertical centers. Again, you can stick the pin in and make sure that it's right where it needs to be. So that looks pretty centered. Maybe slightly off. There we go. So I'm gonna take this over to the embroidery machine. I have already picked out my font. I will link it in the description below if you want to do the exact same font. So I'm going to start my embroidery and while that's embroidering, we'll go ahead and prepare the rest of our pieces. So let's go over to the embroidery machine. Here we are at the embroidery machine. This is the Luminaire 2. I'm going to click on embroidery. I have sent the design over and it's on the Wi-Fi and we're going to use this one. I'm hit OK. So we can see our design. I'm going to hook, put this in the five by seven hoop. So you can tell I'm going to have to rotate it a little bit. So we're going to hit set. I'm going to go to edit, rotate, I'm going to 90 degrees that direction. And we're going to click OK. 
Now we can click embroidery. Let's go ahead and set our hoop in. And I just want to make sure that that crosshair is right there in the center, and it is. We want to double check that. We can hit the light. And it's showing me exactly where it's going to print and how big it is. That looks great. I'm just going to click OK. And now we're ready to lower the presser foot and go ahead and start this embroidery. So while that's embroidering, go ahead and start preparing your lining fabric. I have already taken one of my pieces of fusible fleece and placed it centered on one of my lining pieces. I'm going to take the other piece and do the exact same thing. There's a rough side and a smooth side. The rough side is the adhesive side that goes towards the back of your lining. You want to put the iron on it and just hold it, lift it up, hold it, don't move it around. And then once it's adhered, let it cool off before you handle the fabric. That will keep you from getting puckers in your fleece. If you move it around while it's still warm, the adhesive kind of lets go and then it puckers your fabric. So you want to go ahead and put your fusible fleece on your lining and just center it. Doesn't have to be exact, but basically just centered. Now you might ask why I'm putting the fusible fleece on the lining rather than the outer. And it's just because I have the embroidery on it. If you want to put it on the outer, you can. I just don't like to risk my embroidery uh, or the heat of the iron shrinking the fabric and then the embroidery is going to pucker. So I've got my embroidery done. I'm going to go ahead and release this from the frame. And I did use a cutaway, so I'm just going to cut this around. First of all, make sure you don't cut your fabric. All right, so we've got our outer. This is going to be the front. So your fabric should be seven and a half inches long. So you're going to cut your zipper to six and a half inches. So I've just measured it and then marked it and then I'm just going to cut it. I'm gonna take it over to the sewing machine and I'm just going to stitch across the end so that I make sure I don't accidentally let that zipper pull slide off. You might have to do both ends. Again, this is just a piece from a leftover zipper. So. If you have a zipper stop on it, you can use that for one end. If you don't, um, you wanna make sure and close both ends. All right, and you can see I just ran a stitch right across the end and that's just gonna keep that zipper pull from coming off. Now what we're going to do is prepare our zipper tab. So you're going to take one of your two pieces. Um, this is cut to one and a half by two. You're going to line it up with the edge of the zipper with the pretty side down. This is the top of the zipper. Going to take it over to the sewing machine and you're going to stitch about a half an inch to a quarter of an inch right across of that zipper just like that so again this is pretty side down lined up with the edge of the zipper you can pull it back a little bit if you need to and then you just want to stitch across there across the zipper in a straight line so hopefully you can see that i stitched right across that edge now what we're going to do is lift it up you're going to turn it over. You're going to fold those sides in. And it helps if you clip it. Where'd my clips go? So I'm just going to fold that side in. Didn't leave myself much room on this side, but that's all right. Fold that side in and clip it. And then you're just going to fold this down just about to the zipper. So it's like that. And then down again. So we're on the back of the zipper now. We're going to clip that into place. So it looks like that. We're going to do the same thing over here. Again, I've got a stop here, so I need to make sure I don't sew over that stop. So I'm actually just going to pull this down like this. 
And I'm gonna stitch right across there. Again, make sure you have this piece centered so that you have enough to wrap around. Face down, top of the zipper. You can pull it all the way to the edge if you want. I just wanna make sure I don't sew where that zipper stop and break my needle. So I'm gonna stitch right across there, keeping it centered. It looks like that, I'm snip my thread. All right, we're gonna lift it up, just like that. Kind of finger crease it, turn it over. We're gonna fold this side in. Finger crease it, again, it kind of helps to use your clips. Fold this side in. Finger crease. Clip. So it looks like that. Now we're going to continue that fold all the way to the top. Fold this down to the zipper, like so, and then over the zipper. And add that to our clips. All right, now you're gonna go back to the sewing machine and stitch across the edge, the folded edge right here. If you wanna do a complete square around it, you can. Just depends what kind of look you like. All right, so you can see I have sewn across there. You can see it on the back on both sides. So go ahead and trim up any threads. All right, now we're ready to start assembling the bag. This is pretty straightforward. First thing I'm going to tell you is if you want to put any labels on, you can do that now, depending if you want them on the inside or the outside. I'm going to add my label on the outside of this one. So I'm going to fold it in half. This I want to show on the front. So I'm going to turn it over so that when this is turned right side out, it'll be like that. So you can just tack that down just as close to the edge as you can. If you want to add any other embellishments at this time, you can. I'm not going to put anything else on this one. I'm going to keep this pretty basic. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch my label down. All right, so I've got my label. Again, once this is turned right side out, that's going to end up like that sticking out. So that's exactly what you want. All right, so let's get our zipper installation going. First thing I'm gonna do is fold the zipper in half. You can use a pin if you want, but I'm just actually just going to snip it really slightly to establish the center of the zipper. Just a little bit, just those little notches. Make sure you don't go too far in. You need to be able to catch that in the seam. I'm going to do the same with my outer, fold it in half, barely snip off that corner just to show me the center. Same with this, make sure you're the right direction. All right, so what I'm going to do is take my zipper. My pull is on this side when it's closed. That's the way I want it. I am going to match up those notches, clip this into place. And now all I have to do is take one of my lining pieces, lay it right on top, add it to my clips, lining up the fabric. Making sure to catch everything in there. All right, so you're gonna take it over to the sewing machine. You're going to stitch. And what I kind of do is use the edge of the fusible fleece, which should be a quarter inch, and stitch from edge to edge. So you can see, it's easier to see on, on this side. I stitched from edge to edge. I'm gonna open that up. I'm gonna press this down so it's nice and flat. So now I'm gonna take this over to the sewing machine and I'm going to top stitch right along this edge as close as I can. I like to lengthen my stitch. You don't have to, it just depends what you like. But I'm gonna stitch about an eighth of an inch from this edge all the way down and that will be stitching the front and the back together. All right, so we've got half of our zipper done. Now we're gonna repeat the process with the back piece. So we're going to take our sandwich, flip it over, match up those notches. I like to add a clip. Then we can add this piece. 
making sure that we're catching all three layers and everything is lined up. And again, you're going to stitch quarter inch seam allowance from end to end. All right, same thing. We're going to open it up and we should have our linings and our outers looking like this. So again, we're going to tap stitch right along this edge. You might trim this up if you have any uneven. Looks like I cut that just a little bit too big. No big deal. All right, so I'm gonna tap stitch right along this edge. And it should look something like that when you're done. Again, keep your strings tidy. So your sandwich looks like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this piece and I'm just gonna kind of fold it up like that, right with that seam that we did. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. It's just gonna make things a little bit easier here. All right, now we're gonna bring our two lining pieces together and we're gonna create a sandwich that looks like this. And we're going to bend this so that the lining pieces are straight. Flat together. And we're gonna clip. And clip if it's a little uneven at the bottom don't worry about it then we're going to match up the outers Now on your lining side, you're going to leave a opening. So I'm just gonna mark that with a fabric marker. You can mark it with a pencil, whatever you have, but you need at least, oh, two to three inches. You're going to be turning the bag wrong side out. One thing I almost forgot, make sure your zipper is open. It's not open, open it now. Mine's open. All right, so we're gonna take it over to the sewing machine and you're going to start stitching at one of your lines and you're gonna go all the way around, all the way around and stop stitching at the second line. Make sure that you backstitch at the beginning and the end. When you get over these sides, you should have a quarter of an inch seam allowance that you can stitch in without hitting those zipper tabs. That's what you wanna do. You wanna to try to miss those zipper tabs so that you're sewing with a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around. All right, so I have stitched all the way around, leaving this area open with a quarter inch seam allowance on the edges. I did not hit those zipper tabs. So before we go any further, we're just going to snip the corners. Make sure that you do not cut into your seam, obviously. You can also, if you want, cut down any excess seam allowance. If you do, don't cut between your two lines. All right, so now what we're gonna do is reach inside the hole all the way to the other side and turn it right side out. I'm gonna get in there with a point turner right inside the hole and make sure that all corners are completely pushed out. When you're turning your corners out, don't forget the top. You should see that you missed your zipper pad, so you've got a nice end right there. I'm also going to work on my lining. All right, once you've got that all turned out, called birthing the bag. You're going to let this fabric naturally turn in on itself, just like that. You can press it if you want. And then you're just going to run a stitch. I like to run it clear across the edge. I just think it looks 
more finished, but you can just close up the hole if you want. I'm gonna go ahead and run mine all the way around. And you can see I closed up the bottom. Just gonna tuck that back inside. Again, push those corners out. The lining, the top, make sure that's all straight. And then I'm gonna give it a press. Super cute, we've got nice finished edges on the top. Super cute, and you can see the tag turned out the right direction. So I'm gonna give it a press and we're all finished. So that's it, it's a super simple, we're taking it back to the basics and we're gonna build from here. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to click that bell so that you're notified every time there's a new video. Thanks so much for watching and as always, never stop making. See ya. Bye-bye.